Hey, what's going on, Who That Nation? Welcome to another edition of the State of the Saints podcast, where we talk New Orleans Saints. My name is TJ Jones. Thanks for checking out the podcast. I really do appreciate it. On this edition, we're going to be talking about John Madden. You better come harder than hard, rougher than rough. Put up your guard, get ready to crush. It's things on this field that you just can't change. EA Sports is in the game. What you want? Man, I used to like that song. (laughs) Now, I know what some of you are saying right now. I tuned into the State of the Saints podcast, and TJ is talking about Madden? Man, what's going on? I need you to stay on topic, man. We need to be talking about the Saints. Man, I'm going to get to that. I'm going to get to it. We got to talk about Madden because we have to talk about what is transpiring on this year's edition of Madden 20. Now, for those out there who are not into video games, look, I understand. Everybody is not a Madden fan like myself and so many others. But as you get close to the month of August, it's considered Madden season. Uh, Madden season is a time where giant Madden football is about to be released. And for those that don't know, Madden is supposed to get released, I think, the first week of August. Okay, I think maybe August 2nd or something like that. But Madden season is a big deal. And players' ratings are a big deal. And I have to say that some of the ratings that our favorite New Orleans Saints players have gotten on this year's edition of Madden is just downright disrespectful. I mean, just completely disrespectful. Because I cannot believe that the people at Electronic Arts, EA Sports, disrespected some of the Saints players like this. Now, some of you are probably saying, TJ, it's not a big deal. It's just a game. It's just artificial intelligence. Why are you making such a big deal about it? Some of you probably don't even like Madden. Some of you probably just do not like this season because it's probably the time where your man or your woman don't pay you absolutely no attention whatsoever. And some of my fellas, y'all been here. I've been here. Some of y'all probably slept on the couch because you chose to play Madden instead of going to the mall with your girl. I mean, I've been there. So I understand everybody not into Madden like me, but we got to discuss these ratings, man. We got to discuss them. We got to discuss these ratings, okay? Now, for those that don't know how Madden ratings work, Madden ratings on a scale to zero to 99, okay? Zero is the least i've never seen no player get a zero okay but 99 is the highest 99 is the highest that you can get in madden and some of you probably know because you're probably playing with players with all 99s <laughs> yeah i'm calling you out but zero to 99 okay so keep that in mind i cannot believe that madden ea sports gave drew Brees a 92 they gave the runner-up for the most valuable player in 2018, a 92. Now, a 92 is respectable. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with a 92. A little low for Drew Brees, but if a player gets a 92, ain't nothing wrong with that. That's only, what, seven points away from being 99? But then I looked at some of the players that's ahead of Drew Brees, and I'm just a little confused, man. I'm just a little confused because I'm wondering what in the hell were they thinking? Okay, let's break some of these players down that are ahead of Drew Brees. All right? Patrick Mahomes, league MVP. I can understand, okay? They gave him a 97. Now, does he have a rocket arm? Yes. Does he have a powerful arm? Yes. Does he make some throws that some quarterbacks can't make? Yes. Not mad at that. You're the league MVP. You are ranked as one of the top players in the National Football League. Fine. If you're MVP, you are the best in the NFL. By I mean, ranked by media or your peers or whatever. So, I can let that go. But then I look at players like Tom Brady, who have a 96 rating. He had a 96. Now, I know what some of you are thinking. Tom Brady won a Super Bowl. So, I can understand why he's so high. But we ain't talking about that. Patrick Mahomes didn't win no Super Bowl. And if you look at some of Tom Brady's numbers... 
I mean, average at best. He had 29 touchdowns and 11 interceptions. 11 interceptions, okay? Very, very pedestrian for a Tom Brady season. But he's ranked ahead of Drew Brees. I, I'm, I'm just confused. And then it gets even more complex. You look at people like Philip Rivers. Philip Rivers is ahead of Drew Brees. Now, I'm just wondering to myself, what in the hell did Philip Rivers do that was better than Drew Brees last season? His team didn't have a better record than the Saints did. He threw a lot of interceptions. I remember one game, he threw multiple interceptions, but yet he's ranked higher than Drew Brees. He has a 94. What in the hell is going on? Are you meaning to tell me that Phillip Rivers had a better season than Drew Brees? Hell no. He did not have a better season than Drew Brees. He had a good season, probably one of his best seasons statistically, but he did not have a better season than Drew Brees. I mean, come on, man. It, this is absolutely ridiculous. Now, I'm not trying to uh, defecate all over Phillip Rivers. I mean, he's a good quarterback, man. He is a guy that's probably going to be in the Hall of Fame, probably never win a Super Bowl. But he's going to be there. But he did not have a better season than Drew Brees. Drew Brees had one of his best seasons as a New Orleans Saint. Now, you're probably saying, TJ, that's saying a lot. He didn't have huge seasons, 5,000-yard seasons. But I will put this season, this past season, up against any other season that Drew Brees has had. I'm talking statistically. I'm talking about the way that he managed the game. I mean, he threw his first interception midway through the season. I mean, on a, in a primetime game against the Minnesota Vikings was his first time midway through the season. Drew Brees had 3,900 yards, 32 touchdowns, five interceptions. I mean, let's just eliminate the fact that he became the all-time leading passer and the all-time leading in completions. Forget about all that. The man had the best statistical season of his career. And yet, I'm sitting up here talking up a guy who was a runner-up for a league MVP. I've come to the conclusion, who that nation, that the national media, sports media, EA Sports, they do not respect Drew Brees. I can pull up an audio of Drew Brees breaking the all-time leading passing record and I can pull up Undisputed with Skip Bayless, Shannon Sharp. And not only were they dismissing his accomplishments, they made it seem like any Blake Bortles and Blaine Gabbert could do what Drew Brees has done throughout his career. Zero respect, and it's a damn shame that this man will never get the respect that he so rightfully deserves. They say that he playing doors like that really matters. I mean, Aaron Brooks played indoors. Jim Everett played indoors. Jeff Blake played indoors. Billy Joe Tolliver played indoors. Billy Joe Hobart played indoors. Do you want me to continue? Bobby Abel played indoors. This man is special. And it's a damn shame that I got to talk this man up because they disrespect him by giving him a damn 92. But, oh, it gets worse. They, they didn't just stop at Drew Brees. They even got our boy Alvin Kamara. Now, Alvin Kamara, we know for the past couple years he's been in the Saints uniform. I mean, magical. I mean, this guy is just straight magical, man. Anytime he touches the ball, you have to be on the edge of your seat because you know some magic is possibly going to happen. They completely dismiss this man, completely disrespect this man, he went to the Pro Bowl last year only because he was an alternate, because they wanted to put some of their favorite players in, in, in the national media, the ones in the national spotlight, the Cowboys and the Giants of the world, people like uh, Ezekiel Elliott and Saquon Barkley. They wanted those dudes at the Pro Bowl. They didn't have no time for no Alvin Kamara, okay? But we're going to let all that go. Let's focus on his rating. They gave Alvin Kamara a 90. Now, you're probably thinking, TJ, that's not bad. Nine points away from a 99. He had a 90. But wait until I tell you some of the players that's ahead of him. Ty Gurley. Okay. 
Ezekiel Elliott. He's a bell cow for the Dallas Cowboys. He gets multiple carries. He gets the, the, the grunt work. Okay, cool. Le'Veon Bell gave Le'Veon a 92. Excuse me. Now, I'm not the smartest man in the world, but I can, I can remember Le'Veon Bell didn't even play last season. How in the hell is he ranked higher than Alvin Kamara? How? But, but, but TJ, they're probably talking about overall. I mean, they're probably looking at the stats from year before last. So EA Sports is probably giving him the benefit of the doubt, TJ. Okay, that's cool. But can we give Aaron Rodgers the benefit of the doubt? Because he spent most of his season hurt, right? And we know what Aaron Rodgers can do, but notice I didn't call Aaron Rodgers' name because he wasn't even ranked. He was maybe a 90, 91. Wasn't even ranked that high. He wasn't there. And everybody talked about Aaron Rodgers. Le'Veon Bell didn't do a damn thing, okay? I mean, this is what have you done for me lately. Le'Veon Bell does not deserve to be ranked higher than Alvin Kamara because he didn't play in the 2018 season. But this one right here, uh, uh, this, one, this one trumped it all. Like, <laughs> this right here trumped it all. Le'Veon Bell, look, we look, okay, whatever. Okay, he didn't play. If you want to give him the benefit of the doubt, I'm not okay with it, but fine. But Melvin Gordon, Melvin Gordon got a 92. <sighs> Melvin Gordon got a 92. What? Oh my goodness. What in the hell did Melvin Gordon do to deserve a 92? Now, Melvin Gordon coming out of Wisconsin was one of the best running backs in the draft. He was a beast at Wisconsin. Anybody that watched Wisconsin football know that Wisconsin believes in a good offensive line. I mean, if you don't believe me, watch Ryan Ramchick. They have a good offensive line, and they believe in running a football. Melvin Gordon for the San Diego Chargers, the Los Angeles Chargers, has done absolutely nothing but get hurt. That's it. And, and, and it's not like I'm just hating. If you look at some of these stats, I mean, Melvin Gordon. I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't like Melvin Gordon has <laughs> better uh, stats than Elvin Kamara did because he didn't. 175 attempts for 885 yards and 10 touchdowns, and he had 50 receptions. But if you look at Elvin Kamara's stats, Alvin Kamara had 194 touches, 883 yards, and 14 touchdowns, 81 receptions. Ladies and gentlemen, Melvin Gordon does not deserve to be ranked higher than Alvin Kamara. If you sneeze on Melvin Gordon, if you say, Achoo! he tore his ACL. And yet this man is right now in a holdout saying that he will not show up to training camp if he doesn't get a new contract. Well, excuse me, Mr. Gordon. Last time I checked, they didn't give contracts to China Dolls. And you shouldn't give China Dolls higher ratings than Alvin Kamara. I mean, this is just so disrespectful. Given Marshawn Lattimore 87, Marshawn Lattimore only allowed three wide receivers to score touchdowns on him throughout his entire career. Okay? Three. And I can name them. Julio Jones, Mike Evans, Antonio Brown. If you notice, those are three of the best receivers in the National Football League. No matter how good you are, those guys are going to score on you, okay? This guy only allowed three wide receivers to score on him. Yet this man has an 87. And they gave Richard Sherman a higher rating than him. Richard Sherman, who did absolutely nothing for the 49ers. Oh, my goodness, man. The disrespect. Man, y'all got to do better. Y'all just got to do better. I'm sorry, but y'all got to do better because it seems like there's a bias going on, and I don't like it. <laughs> I do not like it. Now, I know I'm on my soapbox, but I had to sound off, but i like to hear from you. What do you think about these Madden ratings? If you're into Madden, I would love to hear from you. If you're not, I would still love to hear from you. Comment down below, like, and share this video. This has been a State of the Saints podcast, and before I go, I got some good news for you. 
the State of the Saints podcast will now be live. That's right. Starting July 25th, that is the first day of Saints training camp, we will be going live. I will be taking calls from loyal listeners of the podcast, and we're going to be breaking down Saints news, okay, all throughout training camp and all throughout the 2019 NFL season. So I'm really excited about that. It's been a long time coming, and I love to hear from the Who That Nation, man, because, man, I, I hate to uh, keep saying this over and over again, but you all don't know how humbled I am for anybody that listens to this podcast. Whether you're a Saints fan or not, I'm always extremely humbled because when I get behind this mic, I just speak from my heart, man. I'm a, I am love my hometown team. I'm a New Orleans Saints fan through and through. And I love that people listen to my perspective, even if you don't agree with me or not. I'm, I'm extremely humble. So thank you all very much. And I look forward to hearing from some of the members of the Who That Nation. But this has been the State of the Saints podcast. Previous episodes are available on iTunes, Spotify, and iHeartRadio.com. Till next time, all I have to say is, Who that?